Hey everyone, this is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Borg. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is going to be a preview to the Washington Capitals versus Boston Bruins series that starts tonight at 7:15. The first series of the NHL Stanley Cup players for 2021. Get pumped and get hyped, everybody. Let's break it down. This is going to be an interesting series since uh, Sam Sonoff is going to be out at least for Game One, still on the COVID protocol. I'm um, according to Scores injury report for the Capitals. Another guy that's on that protocol is Kuzi again. Evgeny Kuznetsov. And then, of course, Lundqvist is out. Bless his heart. We pray for him to come back. And if he wants to play a successful season, have another season. According to this, Oshi is considered day-to-day, -day, so I'm thinking he would be a game-time decision. And then Kempe is Achilles. For the Bruins, you got Zaboro, Al, Kasha, and Moore um, for them. But when it comes to Vanacek and Rask, who are your expected goaltenders for tonight, Vanacek is 21-10-4 and the 270-908 save percentage and two shutouts. Where Rask has two shutouts in only 24 games with a 9-13, a 2-2-8, and a 15-5-2 and two record. So Rask has been money. He's just played a much lesser sample size than most goaltenders in the league. So the key for this series is going to be goaltending. Will the young goaltending of the Capitals continue to flourish and play well, along with their offense, which is top five in the league, but their defense in terms of goals allowed is 17th, and shots on goals allowed is 11th. So their defense is a lot more inconsistent at times, and their offense, which is always consistently one of the best, well, that's actually flipped. Um, for the Bruins, um, statistically, because of their top lines obviously being heavy, getting most of the scoring out of that line, led by Taylor Hall now with Krejci, who's been money since going to Bruins. He's going to be a key in this series, a key player to watch as well, obviously. And then the Marshan and Pasternak line is what the Bruins are led by, but don't have as much depth scoring, where when you go to the Capitals on the third line, you got 20 points from Sprong, 43 points when Oshi is in, and then 33 points from Wilson, and then 16, 15, and 18 on the fourth line, where the Bruins have someone with nine on the third line. So they mix it up differently. The Bruins obviously have the better defense. Some guys like Sean Corrali don't score as many points, but are a little bit more consistent on defense than guys like Daniel Sprong. On Washington, that's why um, the Bruins have the fourth highest, uh, the fourth best defense in terms of goals allowed and the second best in terms of shots on goals allowed and also the second best penalty kill because they have a lot of good defensive forwards and just good defensive players overall. So it's going to be interesting what comes out. Will the Capitals be able to exploit them and find openings in that defense with some young players mixed in and more inexperienced playoff players mixed in like the Nick Ritchies of the world, the Corrales of the world, the Curtis Lazars of the world? Or will the Bruins continue to play that tight-knit defense that they still have instilled in that team even after Chara leaving that still blocks a lot of shots, doesn't allow a lot of shots, does very good on the penalty kill? Um, will they still have that on their team plus their top 10 in the power play along with being that good on the penalty kill where Washington is third and five? So both of these teams are great on special team, just different where the Capitals are fourth in goals and then the 17th in goals allowed where the Bruins are 14th in goals and then fourth in goals allowed. So it's a battle of will the Bruins defense show out and limit the Capitals enough to win. Plus, I would give the goaltending nod, obviously, to the Bruins with the experience of Tuka Reyes. Or will the Capitals be able to keep bringing enough offense um, in this series to be able to push even through that good Bruins defense that has been among the top five of the league all season? That's going to be the storylines to watch, but the biggest storyline to watch is going to be Tuka Reyes staying healthy, not just for this series, but if the Bruins want to have a good deep run in the playoffs, because unfortunately, I am a Flyers fan, as you can see from the backgrounds, I would rather see the Capitals with how much the Bruins have annoyed the Flyers over the years and annoyed us in postseason series, minus that 3 nothing comeback. Um, I think the Bruins are going to win this series. They got the experience in that. They got... More experience in the lines. They also brought in Taylor Hall that since going there, other than the Sam Bennett trade to Florida, has taken off and really flourished and done well. Bennett's really the only other trade that you could probably rank ahead of Hall, where there were some doubters there. And then also, you got players that haven't produced this year in the Bruins that have a lot more in their skates. Charlie Coyle has more than 16 points. Jake DeBrus, short as hell, is more than 14 points in the skates. And then guys like Wagner and Corrali were both scorers in the juniors. Maybe they're guys that step up more and just start producing more in the playoffs. So they got guys you got to make sure you watch out for. 
plus more experience. That Morshan Bergeron and Pasta line itself is ridiculous. Now you have Crazy Smith and Hall, which is also one of the best second lines as far as I'm concerned now that Hall's in there and doing uh, consistent in the postseason. Their issue is going to be their just third and fourth lines have to do what they've been doing all season on the Bruins. Play good enough defense against the Capitals' third and fourth lines that can actually put the puck in the net enough and have Tuka Reyes keep doing what he's done in his 24 games and stay healthy. And I think the Bruins are going to be able to win this series. I think Tuka's going to carry them over the hump. And their veterans in Marshawn, Pasta, and Bergeron are going to carry them over the hump, as well as the addition of Taylor Hall, which has become a very good addition and the second best addition as far as I'm concerned to Sam Bennett. So I would predict the Bruins, I think it's going to go six games. So I'll take the Bruins in six games in this series as much as I want to see the Capitals win. I wouldn't be mad if they do. I'm going to predict the Bruins just because they got the veteran goaltender. They got the veteran players in Marsham, Bergeron, and Pasternak where the Capitals have some guys that have really stepped up for them in the Daniel Sprongs of the world this year. Um, guys like Raf since uh, go and Connor Sheary stepped up for them this year, where I don't know if Connor Sheary, who's played on a second line for Washington this year, is going to obviously have the consistency of a guy like Craig Smith, or especially Taylor Hall. So I would give them the nod there when it comes to more experienced cats with the Bruins when it comes to the goaltending position, and also just guys that I think have been there and done that before, Marshan Bergeron, Pasta, Paul Krejci especially, Craig Smith, he's one of the more underrated players in hockey. I think that's going to put them over the hump. I hope everybody enjoyed this series preview. Stay tuned for the next series preview, which will be stay, or coming up soon. Issue which is going to be the Islanders and Penguins. I'll release that later tonight since that game is going to be at noontime tomorrow. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody. And let's see who wins this Bruins and Capital Series. What are your predictions? Put them in the comments. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Your support is appreciated and is what keeps the channel going. And subscribe over at Steel Flyers and Flyers Nitty Gritty. Peace out, everybody.